It's crazy because it seems like the rich keep getting rich and the poor keep getting poor. Now, why is that? Well, becoming rich, becoming wealthy, it's not about hustling it out or grinding it out. It's really about the money habits that you form and you practice over years and years. So look, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the three habits of rich people. Let's get straight into it. Habit number one is the focus on growing their income. Now look, investments are great and we're gonna touch on that a little bit further down the line in this video, but the number one way to accelerate your process to becoming rich, to becoming wealthy, to even just having money that you could invest in places is growing your income. And uh, I see this a lot of the time. I see a lot of people thinking that they can just invest their way to becoming rich. You know, they start off with a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe five thousand dollars in the bank, and they literally think that, you know, they are gonna get to a place where they're gonna be rich or wealthy just by investing that income. You know, they think they're gonna take fifteen hundred dollars and turn that into a million dollars in the space of you know two, three years. And stuff like that just doesn't happen. If it does, most of the time it, it's a fluke. So, you know, let's just say, let's take an example, you know, my watch. If you wanted to buy my watch, you might, you know, and you had a hundred K in the bank to invest, you know, at an average return at 8%, let's say, it would take you nine years to buy this watch if you had a hundred K in the bank or 100K to invest and you were getting an annual return of 8%. So the thing is most stuff that people want in life, you know, whether that be a nice watch and you know, we'll get onto that a little bit later about how you should actually manage your money, manage your cash flow. But you know, if there's some nice things that you want in life, um, you know, a house, car, watches, et cetera, et cetera, the easiest way to get there is not to invest your way, although that should be a part of your strategy, the easiest way is to accelerate your income. And that's really what I've focused on over the last two years. And because I've grown my income and I've been able to scale my business, it's allowed me to afford a lot of nice things in life, a lot of luxuries in life. And it's allowed me to have a really, really good sort of nest egg, a really good just chunk of money in my bank account that then I can make wise decisions on what to invest it with. And that kind of brings us into point number two. Habit number two is this mindset of it's not what you make, it's about what you keep. And you know, the age old saying out there is revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. I see a lot of people in the business world, they focus way, way too much on their revenue, when in fact, they're actually making losses in their business. And it's sort of the same thing with your income, right? If you're, you know, making all your money in your business, your agency, your, you know, your profession, your career, and you're taking all that money and you're spending all of it, you are pretty much in the same situation. You know, if you make a million dollars a year and you spend a million dollars a year, or, you know, even worse, I know people out there who make a million and they spend 1.1 or 1.2, you're in exactly the same situation or you have the exact same financial stress as someone who makes 50K a year and spends 50K a year. Really, it's no difference. It's just the stakes are higher, which to me is even scarier. So always remember, it's not about what you make. It's all fine and dandy if you make 100K a year or 500K a year, or maybe even 4 million a year. If you don't keep or retain any of that money or you don't consciously make the decision to, you know, when you do uh, indulge yourself or you do buy some luxuries, number one, have those things in life that are just, you know, for example, with me, it, it's watches. I love my watches. Uh, but for example, I don't own a car. You know, I make a ridiculous amount of money, a couple million a year profit, yet I don't even own a car because to me, I just have, you know, that's one of those things in life where I just have too much guilt to having it sit out front of, uh, you know, sit outside of my house, just kind of sitting there doing nothing. Whereas my watches, they retain value a lot, lot better than say something like cars. So even when I do indulge myself, I'm looking at things that, you know, retain their value because to me, making all this money is great, but it's also what you retain, what you earn and you know, what you can, you know, the, the sort of things you can indulge with in life or you can indulge yourself with, but that still retain some value. So to further that point, having cash in bank or assets that can easily become liquid, for example, say you own a property that is a little more tough to make liquid, AKA to get the money out of that, you know, to turn that house into cash in your bank account, uh, then say something like stocks or say you have an investment or a stake in company, you know, that's a lot tougher than say something like, once again, as I said, stocks or bonds, or foreign currencies, et cetera, et cetera. One of the biggest habits of those that are rich, those are wealthy, is just making sure that they have, you know, for me, I don't really have that many assets. For me, I just prefer to have cash in bank, which kind of brings us on to point number three. Point number three is rich people watch their money like a hawk. Once you, the first step is really just accelerating your income and getting to the point where you're making a lot more money, whether that be, you know, taking you from where you are right now, which is 50K a year to 
100K a year, you know, accelerating your income that way. Or if you're at a point where you're making a million a year and you want to get to 3 million a year or 10 million a year and try to accelerate that, the point is the best thing you can do to sort of spearhead the charge is really focus on accelerating your income. Now, once you accelerate your income, don't be fucking stupid with your money. All right. Remember, it's not about what you make. It's what you keep. And if you do indulge yourself, try to indulge yourself in things that at least retain some value. You know, I even use the example of a car. I would never buy a car new. I would always buy a car used. I don't think there's any amount of money I could ever make. Even, you know, where I am right now making a couple million or a few million a year. I still don't think I'd ever buy a car new just because of the sting of buying that after buying that car, the amount of loss in value. So even if you start making a ton of money, just being smart in the places that you do indulge yourself and you do spend your money. And that's step number two. And that kind of brings us into step number three, which is, you know, making money, making sure that you retain it. Now you have to make that money work for you. Now, one way and probably the most common way is investments, right? And, you know, I always get people uh, shouting at me and stuff like that, you know, basically being like, Iman, why don't you have any investments, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And that is because I am a business owner. So for me right now, where I am right now in my life, it is better to have more cash in bank because I I know that, you know, if my business ever gets super, super cash hungry, which in fact, over the past few months, it kind of has, you know, I have that cash in bank and, you know, that gives me a longer run rate if I ever, you know, do go into the negative, which is very unlikely. But, you know, if I ever go into that negative, which basically means making a loss in my business, I have a longer run rate and run rate basically means how long I can operate the business until I run out of money. So for me, I feel most comfortable having cash in bank, especially because my business brings such great returns, you know, month on month on month. I I am watching my money like a hawk, but I'm deciding consciously and wisely deciding to put my money in my business or sort of protect my business by having a good, you know, a good reserve rather than investing my money. Now, investing my money in real estate, that's something I plan on doing in much farther down the line. But that is a great, great option. For example, if you know, you're a lawyer and you're making a million a year or a doctor and you're making a million a year or half a million a year, you can't really invest that money back into your career, or your profession. So now, you know, a great option for you might be looking at things like real estate stocks, you know, even getting stakes in companies. Those are options to let you have your money work for you because you can't consciously, you know, kind of grow your business in the same way that I can or other entrepreneurs can. So that is step number three. You need to watch your money like a hawk. It's funny, you know, people that don't have a lot of money, they never log into their bank account. They never manage their cash flow. They want to avoid accounting at all costs. Whereas wealthy people, rich people, they love looking at their bank account. I love looking at my cash flow, managing my cash flow. You know, even though I have an accountant and stuff, I still do all of my own books. You know, so I basically have my books done twice simply because because I love looking at the money, you know, seeing where my expenses are fattening up, where I can kind of sort of trim, uh, start to trim the fat or where I'm allocating money correctly and I should allocate more money towards there. So look, I hope you enjoyed this video on the three habits of rich people. As I said, just as long as you follow these three principles, which is one, always focus on accelerating and increasing your income. Number two, always remember, it's not about what you make, it's about what you keep. And number three, watch the money like a hawk. As long as you abide by those three principles and you you do it over an extended period of time, you know, not over one month or two months, over years and years and years. To me, becoming rich is accelerating your income and becoming wealthy is accelerating your income, managing to retain those earnings and then grow it over years and years and decades and decades. So, you know, if you want to first of all become rich, follow that first principle. If you want to then go on and become wealthy, follow principle two and three. And the most important thing is do this over an extended period of time. Now, if you like this video, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also press that bell because I've got videos coming out weekly just like this. And if you want to abide by that first principle and actually go ahead and accelerate your income and start making a six figure income and beyond, there's a two hour free training. The link is right below this video. That's actually how I got my start increasing my income, building a business and being able to have the sort of lifestyle I have as well as the sort of financial security that I have, which is a social media marketing agency. Agency. So as I said, there's a two hour free training. If you want to get started on that first point, you want to accelerate your income six figures and beyond. The link is down below. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.